So that's it for the campfire for now. But what I wanted to show next was how we can do some very basic movement as well. Okay. So I want to create a class. It's, it's effectively going to be our player. So I'm going to call it Fireball for reasons that you'll see in a minute. <laughs> um, and this one, I'm just going to give it um, a particle emitter component. Keep things nice and simple. Um, fire. And I'm going to give it an input component again. All right. So that we can read from the joypad. And finally, I'm going to give it a component called a movement component, which actually lets us issue, issue some movement commands. Fair enough. Seems simple. So yep. we would have input, which would move it. And yep. the visible entity or the mesh, like before, is the particle is the emitter. Exactly, yes. Okay. So now we go to our signal graph again. And this time I want to do something in the update section. All right. So um, from here, I can now, as well as listening for actions from the input component, you can just query for the value of something. So we can do this get key value here. And we can actually set key that we want to listen to. So in this case, we want to listen to the X axis on the left thumbstick. Okay. And I also want to get the, oops, if I can spell, get key value. I want to get the Y axis as well. And with these two, we can build a, a VEC3, which is, I guess, familiar to flow graph users. Yes. A vector. Yeah, a vector. Three. Yeah, I'm not sure actually what it's called in there, but we have 2D vectors and 3D vectors. Vector 3 create. Yes. So the parameters of that will be our x axis value that we read, our y axis, oops, our y axis value. And now we can literally just call movement move we also have a set rotation and a teleport on this component so the teleport would be similar to uh, beam entity in flow graph yes yeah it's just so that like we can tell the physics system actually you're not just moving you're now actually doing a, a complete teleport so it knows to re-physicalize and things like that gotcha avoids any nasty surprises <laughs> um so in theory we should now also be able to add our Fireball. In fact, it's appeared already, as if by magic. And if I go in and I move the left stick, I can move it. Unfortunately, it's moving very slowly. <laughs> um, but that's an easy thing to fix. What I want to show now is another concept, which is variables. And the reason I'm going to make this as a variable is just because it makes it easier to tweak this. So I'm going to create a speed variable. It has a type, which is floating point. And this is a lot easier than before because we had game tokens or possibly yes. CVARs, which are console variables in essence. And those were the ways you interacted before. Yeah, so one very, very important difference with this is the variable belongs to the fireball object. So. Nothing outside of the fireball object knows about this variable. Its lifetime is the lifetime of the fireball object. So it's pretty much a private variable. Yes. We actually, on that note, we have a flag called public. And what that means, if, if we make a variable public, we can then, when we place that entity in a level, we mm -hmm. can edit per instance of the entity, which is useful in many cases. I won't go into that now, but yeah. We could, we could basically have two players and maybe one player could have a different speed to the other or something. Like Going that. outside of this realm, I think, or I believe, actually in the particle editor as well, you can do global variables when I was sitting there. Okay, with, yeah. Believe. So a similar concept. Yeah. And actually, whilst we're on the subject, we can also, with our components, we have, um, if a component has properties, we can make that public. Mm -hmm. And again, once you've placed that object in the level, you can edit those. So we could very easily take our campfire and change the meshes on some of the instances. Cool. Okay, so going back, we have this speed variable. Um, and what I want to do is literally just scale our movement by that speed. So I'll move this node over here a little bit. And I want to... Uh, 
and then we'll get our speed variable. And hook that into there. So before we're, this is a new color, maybe we could go over what do the colors mean? Okay. So nodes in Flowgraph, um, one thing that was very different was that nodes were all pretty much the, the same. They were all kind of equal citizens. And I've, every, every type of functionality that a programmer was going to expose was a new node. Um, in schematic, that's actually very different. Usually what programmers are doing is they're either taking a C++ component and exposing that to designers, or they're taking a function in C++ and exposing that to designers, which creates these very pure nodes that we see here with create and scale. Okay. So red indicates a function node. We actually see a lot of these colors inside here as well. Mm -hmm. Purple is a node that's doing operations on data. So it's a getting a variable, it's setting a variable. Um, we even have, you can have arrays on an element. Any variable can be an array. Um, I think that's unique as well to uh, Schematic. We didn't have a true array in Flowgraph, did true. we? No, we didn't. No. And it's, yeah, it's very useful. Um, you actually see we're going to ship some tutorials with the 5.3, and one of them actually makes good use of arrays. Um, Excellent. So we also have um, signals, and again, they get their own different color. That's green. And how many colors are there? There's white, there's green, Ooh. purple, red. Off the top of my head, I couldn't actually tell you. Um, there's a hundred, no. <laughs> no, I think there's more like five, maybe six. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's not a huge amount. We're, we're, we're trying to find a nice balance of using colors, but at the same time, we can't rely on colors, so we also want to have icons, sensible naming, and it's, it's an ongoing process, but it's, it's got a lot better. We, we, recently, we've, we've made some big improvements. Okay. To not distract, we can go back to uh, the speed. So, yes, I think now we should be able to just move around quite a lot quicker. Oh, much faster. Yes. Okay. Um, this next bit, not really necessary, but I want to add one final component. Well, not final, but <laughs> another one. Um, and this is a camera controller. Um, any entity can have this component, and it basically means that the camera is going to follow that entity. Okay. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a basic orbit camera, so we have control over the yaw, the pitch, the distance. So I'll just set some sensible values that I happen to know very conveniently. <laughs> um, one thing that we have to do on this is we, optionally, a camera can either just be fixed or it can always update, and that means that it will move with its target. Where, so, what is the, an example, then, of uh, a camera that would not have to move? Are you talking about... Like a static Tetris game. Um, so. Yeah. And That's I, when you would yeah, use it. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, again, the, the demo that we want to ship with 5.3, that, that has a very simple game. It's, it's very similar to what I'm actually showing in the demonstration today, but we've deliberately, we've got a nice pretty environment that one of the designers has built, and we, we want a fixed camera just to show, show that off. Excellent. Um, but just for this use case, it's a nice little extra thing to demonstrate how Powerful and simple components can be because now we see the uh, camera move cool. with the object. 